I typically carry a SIG P238 pistol with me anytime I leave the house. It's small, lightweight, and easy to conceal. But lately I've noticed my P229 was starting to feel a little neglected. I'm not really interested in carrying the P229 in a holster on my belt. I know lots of you out there carry guns like this on a daily basis. But I thought a simple leather pouch would be a great way to let my P229 hit the road with me. Speaking of road trips, I'd appreciate it if you'd take a moment to satisfy the almighty algorithm and let me know what gun you prefer to take on road trips. Or if you're just here to see if I accidentally shoot myself, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? For better or worse, there's plenty of holsters that have a built-in magazine pouch. And while you typically don't want your magazine to be carried on the same side of your body as your pistol, I figured I could make an exception since I have no intention of carrying this gun on my belt. By placing the magazine beneath the grip, I could minimize the overall size of the holster, making it take up less room in the center console of my vehicle. We can argue all day about whether or not this was a good idea, but as the saying goes, you'll never know unless you try it. I wasn't overly concerned with maintaining combat grip clearance like would typically be preferred with a concealed carry holster, but I did allow enough room for one finger to grip the pistol. This was my first attempt at making this holster, and as soon as it was complete, my wife and kids and I hit the road to visit family for the weekend. If I were to make it again, I'd probably do one of two things. I would either move the magazine down a bit so I could get a proper grip on the gun, or I'd move the magazine further away from the trigger guard so I could get a two finger grip on the pistol. It might also be worth lowering the sweat shield on at least one side so I could use my thumb to help remove the gun from the holster by simply pushing down on the top edge of the holster. This might allow for one handed removal provided the holster doesn't have an excessive amount of retention. The holster I'm building here is constructed from Herman Oak vegetable tanned leather. I'm using seven to eight ounce for the main body panel, three to four ounce leather for the lining, and the reinforcement panel is four to five ounces thick. Before I can attach the reinforcement panel, I need to edge and burnish the bottom edge of the reinforcement. Then I transfer my stitch lines and then scuff up the leather in the areas where I'll be applying contact cement. I'll be dyeing the holster with Thiebing's Pro Black Dye. And yes, I need to buy gloves. For whatever reason, Thiebing switched to wide mouth bottles on some of their quart sized containers making it almost impossible to pour dye directly from the bottle. Once the body panels are glued together, I transfer the rest of my stitch lines, sand the edges flush, and then edge, burnish, and then dye the edges of all of the holster openings. All of the areas along the perimeter of the holster openings will need to be sewn prior to folding the holster closed into its final shape. With the edges sufficiently burnished, I use my adjustable creaser to mark the perimeter stitch lines and then I head on over to my Cobra Class 4 and sew the holster with orange 207 bonded nylon thread. With the first sewing operations complete, I mark the stitch lines on the interior of the holster so I know where to apply contact cement. And then I scuff the leather with my scratch awl and sandpaper. The reinforcement panel will be glued on with contact cement. But before I do that, I taper the ends of my thread with my knife, 
and then secure the thread beneath the reinforcement panel. Then I attach the reinforcement panel, hammer it into place to strengthen the bond, and then sand, edge, die, and burnish the reinforcement panel before sewing it to the rest of the holster body. And in case you're wondering, I'm applying the die with a refillable marker container, which I've filled with Phoebing's Pro Black Dye. I have affiliate links to most of the products I've used in the description below. It won't cost you any more if you buy products from those links, but it will send a little money my way to help pay for more videos like this. I apply contact cement to the interior of the holster and secure the remaining thread ends within the glue areas. And of course, I do my best to make this look as fiddly and complicated as possible. Prior to folding the holster closed, I dampen the leather with water so it folds more easily. Then I carefully align the edges and clamp it together while it dries. A few hours later, I sand the edges flush, then edge, burnish, and dye the edges. The rest of the holster edges and stitch lines are then sewn together, and then it's ready for forming. I'm dunking the holster in warm water with a little dish soap added to the water to help break up surface tension. The soap supposedly helps the water absorb into the leather more easily. And if your shop is like mine with no running water, it makes a great way to wash your hands every now and then. And when you're done, it makes a great fly trap. The holster can be a little tight at first, so I typically insert the gun by itself without a sight channel dowel in place. Once the pocket of the holster is roughly formed, I attach the dowel so I can mold the sight channel. I do my initial forming with a vacuum press. If you'd like to learn more about my press setup, I have an article on my website. Just go to my blog page and search for the word vacuum, and you'll find it pretty easily. Or look for the link in the description below. I'm sealing the holster with a 50-50 mixture of water and acrylic sealer. I typically brush the interior surfaces first, then apply it to the exterior. You can also simply dunk your holster and sealer if you buy it in large quantities, but note that the dye will contaminate the sealer over time, so you'll need multiple containers of sealer, depending on how many dye color options you have. Once the sealer has started to dry, I polish the edges with my wooden burnisher. As you can see, the holster worked out pretty well on the first attempt. Yes, it's not perfect, but neither am I. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I already have a few ideas on how I could improve this holster on future iterations. But this one worked perfectly fine on its first road trip, so I may keep it around a while. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and let me know your thoughts down below. Take care and I'll see you next time.